Gee, I tell you what, that was an angry scene. They've stayed there for seven and a half hours. They're back in the city and many of them have been fuelled by grog as well. Well, Chris, uh, I am here in Geelong. Uh, I haven't, of course, seen this firsthand in Melbourne, but I've seen the pictures all day and we are seeing uh, alarming scenes of violence, uh, mass protests, of course, uh, involving many uh, violent members of the CFMEU uh, and, of course, a complete breakdown in the moral authority of Daniel Andrews after he shut down the construction and building industry overnight. Uh, I condemn the violence, Chris. Uh, no one should be protesting, but I can understand why people are angry. They're angry because their industry has been shut down overnight. And what's the health basis for doing so? Uh, there is no proper basis for doing so. This looks like political payback, political retaliation. And we now have absolute chaos on the on the streets of Melbourne, it is shocking what is going on in Melbourne and Victoria right now. And even more than that, they're saying every day, every day, the Premier has given these protesters the time to turn up every day. That wasn't thought through very well for a start. And as you say, you're quite right, you can't just walk off a construction site, whether it's a building, a major building or a small house. Well, that's exactly right. This punishes some 320,000 workers who work in the building and construction industry right across uh, Victoria. It is completely shocking what we have seen in this decision made by uh, Daniel Andrews and his government. And, of course, a federal Labor MP, Richard Miles, the most senior uh, federal MP in Victoria, uh, is in hiding, along with Daniel Andrews. Uh, Libby Coker, who represents Karangamite, she is utterly useless. She's done nothing to stand up to this violence. So we are seeing uh, federal Labor MPs acquiesce to this chaos, uh, led, of course, by Daniel Andrews. But I think also, Chris, we're seeing the culmination of Victorians who've had enough. Uh, there are too many draconian restrictions. Yeah. I've been speaking out for the last month, Chris, about the shocking state of affairs where thousands of Victorians were trapped into state, unable to return to their homes. We've seen pubs and clubs close down with draconian restrictions, which are sending so many businesses to the walls. Kids who can't go back to school in any reasonable period of time. Uh, and now, of course, the building and construction sector shut down. Uh, I do think, as I say, Daniel Andrews has lost his moral authority to govern. Uh, the workers of Victoria, particularly in Melbourne, have turned on Daniel Andrews. Yep. But Chris, you know, why should a carpenter or a bricklayer in Geelong or Torquay or Ballarat or Preston or Lilydale, why should they pay the price for not being able to work uh, because of this overnight drastic ban? It is absolute chaos. And as I say, I think Victorians are retaliating because uh, Daniel Andrews, in a number of respects, has not followed the COVID-19 national plan. These restrictions are too slow. This so-called roadmap is far too slow and it's sending uh, many people on a road over the cliff. And uh, I'm, I'm extremely concerned about things at the moment. Yeah, and when I saw that protest on Saturday, I thought to myself, he has a prime opportunity on Sunday to give the people of Victoria, in particular the Melbourne residents, hope. You've got to have hope, especially when mm. you've been locked down 230 days and you've got this draconian curfew hanging over your head as well, which is based mm. on no science whatsoever. All of this leads to the fact that he could have saved the day on Sunday by giving Victorians hope, and that went out the door. Well, Chris, that's right, and I think uh, that was the point that Matthew Guy made when he became the opposition leader. He talked about hope. He talked about bringing Victorians together. Uh, he talked about uniting Victorians. But what we saw from the roadmap from Daniel Andrews on Sunday is everything but. And, for instance, Chris, I've called today for the lockdowns in Geelong and the Surf Coast to end. Would you believe there were two cases of COVID in the Surf Coast, and that stretches all the way from Lawn to Anglesey, uh, right up through uh, to Torquay, and uh, they have gone into complete lockdown along with the Geelong region. And the little town of, coastal town of Point Lonsdale uh, is divided because it covers two different municipalities. It's incredible risk aversion, uh, I mean, isn't it, Sarah? 
Why are we locking down regional areas on the first day of the school holidays? Oh. These poor tourist operators, these accommodation providers, the pubs and the restaurants, they are desperate to open. This was the first chance in quite a few months that they were ready to open to make a few dollars. And they've been absolutely smashed over the head. It's yep. just absolutely terrible, Chris. Uh, as I say, the lockdowns in regional Victoria have to go. The draconian restrictions have to go. Uh, Daniel Andrews needs to reverse his decision uh, in relation to the building and construction sector. And, uh, you know, as for the riots we are seeing on the streets, uh, it's it's really just shocking. We've we've seen uh, the Labor Party drive things completely out of control in this state. Yeah, not to mention the waste of so many police resources.